Let's assume that we would like to compare between two countries and would like to know which country has a bigger economy. So how are we going to do this? We need to look at gross domestic product, GDP. So what do we mean by GDP? It refers to all goods and services produced in one country in one year. So it will show us the total production of goods and services within a certain country and then compare the GDP figures. So how many approaches do we have to measure GDP? We have three approaches. The first approach is based on the definition. And that's why we call it a production approach. And our production approach formula will be the summation of the price times quantity for all goods and services produced within the country. So let's assume for simplicity, hypothetically, we have only two goods, markers and laptops. So we need to state the price and the quantity for each product. So for markers, we have a price of 10 and the quantity produced is 1 million. For laptops, we have a price of $1,000 and the quantity produced is 20,000. So now for each product, we need to get the price times quantity. So for markers, it will be 10 times 1 million. It will give us 10 million. For laptops, it will be 1,000 times 20,000. And this will give us 20 million. Therefore, our GDP will be the summation of 10 million plus 20 million, which will give us 30 million. This was our first approach, which is production approach. So, if I would like to know how much money do you make, how could I know? We have two approaches. The first one is I need to look at your expenditure. If you spend your money on luxurious stuff, so this means that you make a lot of money. And this is called the expenditure approach. The second approach would be, I need to look at your base lip. And from your base lip, I will know how much income do you make. Therefore, when we look at GDP, our other two approaches are expenditure approach and income approach. So let's look at expenditure approach. Every time you receive an income, what are you going to do with this income? You will consume part of it, you will spend it, so this will be consumption. And the other part, you're going to save it, and this will be your savings. So with your savings, you could invest this money yourself, so you're going to go and make a project, or you'll put these savings in a bank, and then an investor will go to the bank, take your money as a loan, and invest it. Therefore, these savings would lead to investment. Consequently, our GDP formula based on expenditure approach is equal to consumption plus investment. So does it mean that it's only private investors make investment? Or the government could make some investment, the government could make investment. Therefore, we need to add government expenditure. Does it mean that households or private consumers are the ones who only make consumption or the government could make consumption? The government could make consumption as well. So the government could build all the infrastructure, roads, tunnels, bridges. Therefore, with this consumption, we can call it private consumption, while for the government expenditure, we call it public consumption. We can use the same logic with investment. With investment, we can call it private investment, but with G, it includes public investment. So let's return back to our domestic production. Do we consume all our production consumption? Definitely not. We export part of it. Therefore, we need to add exports. So our next point will be, do we consume only domestic goods? Absolutely not. We consume many imported goods. Therefore, we need to deduct our imports. We know that exports minus imports are called net exports. Therefore, our formula of GDP based on expenditure approach is consumption plus investment plus government spending plus exports minus imports. So we have three approaches to measure GDP. If I asked you, what is the GDP formula? So you have three formulas. The default one is expenditure approach. So once I say what's the GDP formula, you need to look at expenditure approach. So our GDP will be consumption plus investment plus government spending plus exports minus imports. Then let's look at our third approach, our income approach. 
we need to know what are our major factors of production. In order to produce anything, what do we need to have? We need to have land, labor, and capital. So with the capital, from where we will get this fund, from where we will get this money to finance our project? So this will be either from loans, so it will be a debt, or it will be from our savings or the money from investors, which is called equity. Therefore, if we're going to lease the land, what we're going to pay in return? We will pay rent. If we're going to hire labor, what we're going to pay in return? We're going to pay wages. But does it mean that wages are the only benefit workers or employees get from a company? Definitely not. They get superannuation or pension. They get annual leave, sick leave, maternity leave. Therefore, we will call it employee compensation. Every time you take a loan, what do you need to pay on this loan? You need to pay an interest. Every time you risk your money and you invest in a project, what do you expect in return? You expect to get profit. But does it mean that all projects would lead to profit? No, sometimes they make a loss. Therefore, it will be profit or loss. Consequently, our GDP formula based on income approach will be rent plus employee compensation plus interest plus profit or loss. And these are the three approaches in order to measure GDP, the production approach, expenditure approach, and income approach.